Okay, so if I'm praying, like at the moment I'm praying, say, 10 hours a day, a lot of it on, uh, on breathing, on uh, some breathing issues, cancelling beliefs, on breathing. And uh, uh, so there was two things, wasn't there? And there's some other issues in cancelling. But uh, I was asked the question on, are you avoiding life by praying for so long? And, and if I was going to pray for, and the washing machine needed to be done, uh, and just praying would that, um, the washing machine wouldn't get done is it best just to get the washing machine done and not do the prayers? And so that was the, that was the gist of the question. At least that's what I heard. It might have been a different, a different question. Well, I think it, 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 well, everything, possibly in some context, at certain levels of consciousness, could be an avoidance of life. That's for sure. Uh, but it could also be the right thing to do in a certain context as well. Uh, the other thing would be, and I had another question on, um, oh, I've forgotten the other question. Anyway, so um, so uh, the other thing I'd like to bear in mind, this thing, first of all, um, prayers, uh, uh, a prayer for the what? Well, for me, there's a levels of consciousness. So it's like some prayers come. From, I mean, a prayer like uh, God help me win the lottery, uh, uh, and doing that for ten hours would be like, I would say that would be more likely to be like an ego motive or manipulating God to get an ego outcome. So, so the prayer would be used as a magical means to get what the ego wants. So to expect divinity to give you a winning lottery ticket for me wouldn't be, and the ego might think genuinely that's a thing that, that God should be doing. So then I would say uh, that would be that would be the wrong use of prayer, <clears throat> you know, to get, get the lottery. I mean, to get the washing machine, I mean, the washing needs to get done, you've got to get to work. Would I... Um, well, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Uh, I guess I'll answer this question. Um, and I get... I mean, I have people I help in various 12-step fellowships with addiction. And I often get this thing of, I'm too busy to do spiritual work. Life's too hectic. I haven't got time. And I usually answer the question, and I, I tell them, like, in, uh, this is this is the kind of a wisdom that's known by old times in twelve-step groups, which is repeated. It sounds like the opposite of what a normal person would believe, which is like, the more I get spiritually connected, the more gets done with no effort, and the more things miraculously get done, and the more I'm spiritually disconnected and do less spiritual work, and the more I get, try to get done in a spiritually disconnected state, the less gets done, and it's more effortful, and I burn out. And so, and, and so this is the thing I usually get with, like, attending spiritual groups. And, uh, I, think, and I tell them, and I was, I was actually saying this to one of my people I was helping with a certain addiction. It's like... You know, and he was hearing, he was thinking this idea, which is often said in these spiritual groups, like, don't waste your life doing these spiritual groups that much. I mean, you might want to go once a month or something, but you don't really want to waste your life avoiding doing this stuff and, and, uh, and just, you know, live your life and enjoy yourself. And, you'll get, and, you'll, and you've got a, a busy life to live, you get lots of stuff done. And so I said to him, like, I actually find that the more spiritual groups I go to, and the more I spiritually connect, and the more I, I pray throughout the day, and I feel more spiritually connected, more gets done, and it seems like I don't do it. And it miraculously gets done. And I prefer a life where things seem effortless, and miracles tend to happen, rather than I'm doing, uh, then being in those states where there seems to be a lot of things that need to get done, and I'm struggling to get them all done. So I choose, uh, and I'm quite happy. I, I still would rather uh, do... I mean, the thing of doing work sounds like a laborious thing. It's not to do the work. It's to get into those spiritual states. Uh, and the spiritual states, in my experience, uh, once one, I'm in them, everything gets done and it's not me that's doing it, which is sublime. So, and I don't actually like the states where there seems to be a lot of stuff that needs to get done, and my ego has to do the work to get it done. So I'd rather do the... Uh, 
if I'm not in those states, I'd rather do the spiritual work to get into those spiritual states so the flow can handle it, rather than... Now, sometimes the, the answer is practical. I mean, it's like there's, um, the washing has to get done. So I'll just put the washing on and keep... Or, but usually something will happen, like I can pray and put the, I can switch the button while I'm praying, you know, or I can sing the beliefs. So it doesn't necessarily go that I have to... Or I can say the Lord's Prayer while I'm pushing on the washing machine. So that's how it usually goes. So if there's work, I'd rather still, I'd start, I'd still rather the work be done without me being there, if that makes sense to anyone who's been in those states. Uh, and I'd rather, and, and also for me, it's the thing of, um, there comes the resolution, I think for, at least for me, and it seems obvious from listening to uh, enlightened teachers, that, um, you have to break levels of the ego with faith uh, and, and, and going to extremes to get to the next level of dissolution of the ego, where the ego will always go, but you can't do that because either <clears throat> your life will fall apart, you will not function, what will people think of you, you won't be able to afford the groceries or whatever it is. And that's usually one of the testing grounds. It's like, um, I think, uh, so it was like, um, yeah, I think there was a story of like Hawkins was on a rock and he was just going to sit on that rock and bliss out until, until everything was finished, you know, and, and, and he was doing that. It's a blind bliss. It didn't really matter if the body dropped, dropped over. So it's like that complete, like, you know, this is going to be me and this rock and enlightenment, you know. And uh, I, f I still forget what he said was uh, why he's not on the <laughs> But it was like, that was it. That was like this level of commitment. It's like nothing in this world is going to stop me from, from going all the way. And even if the body drops over, so what? There is nothing in this world that, that, that's that. And I think in those states, when you reach those levels of consciousness, it is a bit like forget the washing kind of thing, you know, because it's like there's a... There's a, um, there's a burning to be free, and, 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 and the thing that the ego thinks needs to get done to stop that isn't really seen as... Um, it's, seen, it's, it's more seen that life is an avoid... It's seen the ego as an avoidance to get into that place, if that makes sense. There is nothing in the world. It'd be like, well, the ego goes, well, what about the washing? Uh, what about feeding the dog? What about... Uh, what about getting an umbrella before you sit on the rock forever? You know? <laughs> so it's a, bit, it's a bit like that. So there's different levels of content. And then on a certain level of content, I mean, if you're like a spirit, spiritually, at certain spiritual levels of consciousness, it is the right thing. It would be an avoidance, yeah. It'd be like, uh, well, you're not a guru. You're not enlightened. You're not ready for doing that type of thing, even though other enlightened teachers have done it. You really need to get the washing done and sort of like, uh, you know, do whatever. Uh, but I think as you spiritually evolve, you find if there's things in life that need to get done, you find ways of doing them and staying spiritually connected. So it's not necessarily an either or. Uh, mm -hmm. So um, so I could, you know, like with some some prayers, you know, I can do I, I cancel my belief in uh, in breathing difficulties. I'm an infinite being and put the washing machine and eat at the same time. Mm -hmm. It's not necessarily. It's like well, if I'm going to, and sometimes there's a thing of like with, like at certain stages, you start to get, and I, I mean, I also had the benefit, I think it's a benefit of being a hypnotherapist and realizing what a belief means and how much it requires to undo a belief system. A belief is something ferocious from the ego. It doesn't, it's not going to, you know, it's like it's not going to give up a belief that easily, usually. It's ferocious, it can be really, really ferocious. So um, even though hypnotherapy is a very powerful tool, it's like, and, and having done the Course in Miracles many times over, it's like I could see, it's like it's just bashing the ego until you just wash out those beliefs. It's like, you know, like you're going to do this every hour on the hour and just going to say something your ego hates, you know, because that's what's required to like wash out all limiting beliefs from different angles, you see. So there is a kind of like a bloody mindedness which the ego hates. It's like, no, I'm not going to do it every hour. No, I'm not going to do it every 10 minutes. No, I'd rather do something else. I'm not, taking a break is healthy. 
putting washing on is now seems like more enjoyable than praying for another hour. So it's like, but there's different context to it. So some, yes, and there was another question. I, I think I remembered it. Or do I remember it? Is it a voice? Yes, superstition. Yes, that was superstition. It was a different question. Um, mm. Like, is it possible that I've got a superstitious belief? Like, if I don't pray for 10 hours, I'll get hit by thunder at the end of the day or something like that. <laughs> you know, I need, I, need, I need 10 hours. If I do 9 hours and 30 minutes, something might go wrong. And I think that could also be a case, and, uh, I don't, uh, which would be then I'd, I'd need to cancel that belief. <laughs> I'd probably cancel that belief for 10 hours <laughs> to get rid of that. i go, oh, God, you know. Yeah, I've got to cancel, keep cancelling this belief for 10 hours a day that I have to do 10 hours a day until I don't feel that any longer and I'm free of that belief. So I'd probably be doing that for 10 hours a day. But, but the same thing would still work because you know when you're free mm. of something. Because you know it's like, okay, I've got this belief that if I do like 9 hours or even 1 hour, I'm going to be hit by thunder. I need to do 10 hours and then I won't be hit by thunder today. So they've mostly got a, li a limiting belief in there. I'm superstitious about it. So I'll probably do 10 hours just to make sure it's still, do I still have that belief? I can't do another 10 hours. Until it, but that's how I find things go. There's a certain time when you find it's neutrality, it's like it's rubbish, you know, and then you can stop doing it. But you have to do the work until you get to that point. And if you, if you suspect, it's like the Holy Spirit will tell you, look, like you've got this limiting belief. So mm -hmm. you need to work on that limiting belief because the only reason you're doing 10 hours is out of superstition or out of a limiting belief. So anyway, I think when you're doing spiritual work, especially the Course of the Holy Spirit would eventually tell you, like, uh, you're just doing that out of superstition, you're not really doing that for, en for enlightenment, you know. But sometimes it could be genuine, that's what's required. Sometimes these levels of bloody-minded spiritual work is required to let go of some stubborn, stubborn stuff. And actually, what's happening when the ego's going, don't do it, don't do another hour, do the, put the washing machine, don't do another hour. Uh, because you, this is probably just superstition. It's actually the ego trying to not make you do another and break the belief, you see. So it can equally be the opposite thing. It just depends, you see. So different contexts, different levels of consciousness. There's also different levels of experience uh, that go on. But I would, I would point to um, my thing of like, and Hawkins talks about it as well as power versus force. Um, it's like, if your ego thinks it needs to get things done in the world, what you're using is ego force to get them done. So your ego will have to expend effort getting those things done. It's a chore. There's, it's a doing. It's not effortless. So the, what's counterintuitive is there is to do spiritual work until you're in the effortless states and let the spirit do it, which is timeless and effortless, and your ego's not doing it. So, um, <clears throat> so that's, uh, that's the method I prefer. And when I sort of... Um, uh, this thing when I'm helping people in active addiction is like, a, you know, I urge them, you know, you want to be, <coughs> it's more important to get your spiritual vibration, your consciousness level up through the spiritual work in the beginning than getting all the urgent things you think you need to get done and not doing the spiritual work. Because I know that once they get, the more that they are spiritually connected, the more everything gets done effortlessly. And it's true for me. If I feel spiritually connect, disconnected on a day, and there's hundreds of things to do, and I do it from a spiritually disconnected state, very little gets done in the day. Whereas if I spent two or three hours spiritually connecting, more would have got done than if I hadn't, if that makes sense. It's a paradox. So often I'm trying to, if there's a lot of stuff to do, I'd rather go into spend the time getting into a spiritual state than trying to do the work from a spiritually disconnected state. That's my experience. Thank you.